Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about how to prepare data science in 2022. Now this particular video, I try to upload every year. That is also starting of the year. The reason why I upload this is that from past three to four years, we have seen data science evolving a lot. You know, there's a lot of research that is basically happening. There's so many amazing things that are coming in data science. So if you really want to get into data science, this kind of skills gets added and we really need to make, self, make ourselves updated with respect to this kind of skills. Now here in this video, I'm going to bluntly say you many things, okay? The reason why I'm saying you bluntly many things because many people have made some amazing successful career transition. In the past two years, I've seen many of my subscribers have actually done that. I definitely know that what companies are actually asking, what they are not asking, which is the favorite skill in data science and all. So we are going to discuss about that. Please make sure that you watch this video till the end. If you're preparing for data science, guys, it is super, super important, right? Now, before I go ahead, uh, I really want to announce iNeuron has actually come up with this one neuron platform where you get 100 plus courses where you have some amazing courses related to data science, deep learning, machine learning, AI ops, ML ops, dev ops, cloud, and many more, right? And this all, this all courses will be just be available to you in 6,000 rupees plus GST for lifetime if you are already taking it before January 15th. So this is the offer that we have come up with this. One Neuron is an OTT platform, guys. So please make sure that you take this because you can raise a lot of requests, you can actually do a lot of live sessions also, you can ask doubt clearing session, everything is included over there. So the information will be given in the description of this particular video. Now let me go ahead over here to talk about how you should prepare data science in 2022. Now I have actually divided over here with respect to three main things. One is basics, intermediate and advanced. So three levels I'm actually going to use over here. And remember guys, if you are somewhere between zero to four years of experience, right? You really need to be somewhere in between this basics to intermediate to get jobs. Okay. To get jobs. And I'll talk about what all things you have to prepare in the basics level, intermediate level and advanced level. If you are <clears throat> more than four plus years, you really need to be in this intermediate to advanced stage. Now, what all skills will definitely come into this intermediate and advanced skill? I'll just talk about it. Now let's go ahead and let's try to understand why I have divided in this particular way that is basics to intermediate to advance. Okay. Now, if I talk about the skill sets that will come in basics, so let's, let's, let's write it down skill sets in terms of basics. Now, what all things you have to start with and how you have to start with. The first thing is that one programming language. So definitely I will prefer Python. You may be saying that Krish, uh, my target is basically to become a data analyst. Let's consider, right? So in this particular case, I may take our programming language. Guys, whatever it may be, see, if you are also planning to become a data analyst, at one point of time, you'll also feel that, okay, I really want to become a data scientist also, because there are a lot of scope. Just don't stop being a data analyst itself. I know data analyst work is also awesome, but always try to take this particular opportunity because there is a lot of competition. If you know both data analyst and data scientist is well and good. So my favorite choice will be Python programming language. Now, how you have to pre create or learn this Python programming language. Python programming language is very much important, right? You have to at least learn till oops concepts, including all the data structures, all the amazing data structures that Python has with some of the libraries like NumPy and Pandas. That is super, super important guys, because if you really want to do any kind of EDA with respect to any kind of data, at that point of time, you will be requiring those kind of libraries. So here, along with all the data structures, I have written till oops, okay? So oops is definitely required. And still I consider this in the basic, basic category. Basics category basically means any person, whether you are 10 plus years of experience, if you are planning to get towards data science, my favorite programming language will be Python and you really need to be good at it till at least this much stage. Okay. Now understand that once you become good at oops, okay. Once you know how to uh, basically work with libraries like NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas and all, these are some amazing libraries, Matplotlib, Seabona, visualization libraries. So considering the important libraries I'm going to write over here, 
oops this is super super important and some more things which is called as frameworks now these frameworks are also very important now if i talk about frameworks what all kind of frameworks i'm actually talking about let's consider a framework called as flask which will actually help you to create a web application let's talk about a framework called as django right so if you know these two frameworks also and if you know till the basic level also i told you that if you are somewhere between zero to four years of experience and if you really want to get jobs okay not exactly into the data science industry but at least to do some kind of work with the help of python programming language you will be able to get it if you know this kind of frameworks this framework actually helps you to build some amazing web application flask and django there's a lot of scope where i've seen a lot of requirements where people have with respect to django also okay now you may be saying krish uh, i know you'll just be keep on adding the skills but definitely if i want to start today you know it will take me too much of time guys that that is what i'm trying to say you right this is a continuous process you know i never initially when i started this you know i never went and saw uh, django i was just focusing on flask on streamlet where i used to basically see how we can deploy the models but when the requirement came with respect to the django in my company i definitely started learning it so it is a continuous process you cannot just learn this in one day okay so this is very much important now if you are able to do all these things trust me this is still in the basic level you will be able to get jobs not exactly with respect to data science but with respect to a back end uh, developer where you are specifically working with flask and django now the second skill set that you really need to focus on is basic maths okay so if i'm talking about maths again understand maths we are actually learning from our 10th the entire school days 10th and 12th 10th and 12th plays a very important role in our life because maths is very much important and whatever things we learn over there probably the same thing we are getting applied over here now in maths some of the topics that i really want to focus on is something like probability right the second thing that i really want to focus on is linear algebra right linear algebra is super super important where you there are a lot of topics let's let's consider that some of the topics like vectors scalars you know how you can actually basically measure a distance from a point from a line to a point from a plane to a point something like that right how you can basically calculate slopes uh, all those things you know and slopes can also be the part of differential equations right differential equations super important guys again i'm telling you very very super important because this all kind of things will be similarly used in all the algorithms that we are probably using in maths okay so maths is super super important again you really need to make your base rock solid right so this is very much important if you really want to go ahead with respect to kind of any kind of things that you do in maths okay one very good news uh, with respect to this i already have a python playlist right uh, i already have a playlist where i talk about maths where i talk about linear algebra where i talk about uh, slopes and all okay so this there is not a separate playlist but with all the topics that i have actually discussed i have included all these things so you do not learn separately okay try to learn together with the things that you are actually learning in your road map the third thing that i really want to focus on is something called as statistics again guys this is the part of the basic stuffs itself because you really need to get your base very very good now in statistics uh, usually statistics deals with two different type one is descriptive and the other one is inferential so most of the statistic concepts most of the statistic concepts will be dealing in this two types itself descriptive and inferential statistics descriptives have measure of central tendency measure of dispersion in short descriptive statistics all about summarizing your data efficiently okay so you may be using histogram you may be using different you know, plots like box plot whisker plot and all right inferential statistics it's mostly about hypothesis testing okay hypothesis testing and in this you have all various types you know you have tests like z test right you have t test you have chi square test right you have uh, anova test and many test as such okay so this is called as inferential statistics because what we do is that if we have a sample data we make inferences for the population data that is what we do over here okay so we make specific inferences with respect to population data so <clears throat> i have also a playlist on this and again i usually consider this in the basic stuff because you really need to be good at 
all these things okay now as you move towards the intermediate level now the second level that you i'm going to write over here is skill set of intermediate level right now here i'm going to divide based on two one is machine learning one is deep learning right and the third one is auto tuning the model or instead of writing auto tuning i will just include this in the life cycle of a data science project i'll tell you why data science project again guys very super important if you are till the intermediate level there is a highest and maximum probability you will be able to crack any kind of jobs unless and until you are not very highly experienced like more than 8 8 plus years of experience so what you really need to focus in the intermediate level is that you really need to focus on the life cycle of a data science project from from data collection then you probably go to feature engineering or eda so here i'm just going to say exploratory data analysis then you go with respect to feature engineering then finally you go with model creation right and then you go with hyperparameter tuning of the model i hope this kind of diagrams i have drawn a lot then finally at the last stage you do the deployment before the deployment i will not keep deployment uh, let's consider that i have kept deployment till here so this is the entire process and one more level that i really want to talk about is model retraining approach okay model retraining approach so this is the entire life cycle of a data science project now we really need to focus on both machine learning and deep learning because many people ask me krish is it just sufficient that we only prepare for machine learning and probably apply for jobs guys if i go 2 years back i would have said definitely yes just learn machine learning no need to learn deep learning but now the competition is very good you know many people know both machine learning and deep learning so you really need to be good at it you know so there is also a technique uh, where uh, and remember one thing in machine learning and deep learning we basically focus on regression uh, classification and we also focus on unsupervised technique right like clustering algorithms right so unsupervised techniques like clustering algorithm so you really need to focus on this criteria and probably learn all the important algorithms right now with respect to intermediate uh, if i really want to talk with respect to the machine learning algorithm uh, there are algorithms like uh, linear regression okay so I'm, i'm just going to note down all the algorithms just let me write it properly so linear regression right then you have and i'll just name it down because for writing it will take time so in machine learning you have linear regression logistic regression you have decision tree random forest xg boost you have uh, different different kind and this all works both in classification and regression algorithm specifically starting from decision trees right in deep learning with respect to the intermediate level you really need to have a very good understanding of all the optimizers activation functions you really need to be good at ann cnn rnn uh, lstm rnn at least till this much okay i'm not talking about highly advanced object detection and all with respect to cnn at least you should know what is transfer learning how many different types of transfer learning techniques you can apply, actually apply how you can reuse the weights how you can train the models everything right so this is important with respect to both machine learning and deep learning again i'm telling guys super important you really need to be good at both machine learning and deep learning okay so this is a specific request to you all now coming to the next thing uh when i talk about this entire life cycle of a data science project till the hyperparameter tuning of the model that is well and good but when we come to the deployment part uh, definitely we 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 need to use cloud platforms like aws we need to use cloud platforms like azure or gcp right and in all this kind of platforms you know our uh, initially uh, you know many people used to just do the deployment without thinking scalability into mind without thinking anything in mind right so over here if i really want to consider scalability if i really want to consider the ci cd pipelines you know uh, because in in a normal in a normal project you have probably heard of devops right so similarly in a data science project there is something called as mlops and it has become very much popular last year 
there were a lot of huge openings with respect to ML ops and AI ops, which I could definitely see where I could see many of my subscriber and students getting jobs and that too. So coming to the third one, which is again very super important, which is nothing but the skills of advanced. And for the people who are more than eight plus years of experience, this is must. Okay, this is must. So if I talk about this, suppose you want to do specifically do the deployment. Uh, here, you really need to focus on Kubernetes, right? Dockers, right? You need to know how to create a CI CD pipelines. I'll just put this at the part of AI ops or ML ops, okay? AI ops or ML ops. Uh, for scalability, you'll definitely use Dockers, okay? The fourth thing is that you also need to focus on retraining approach, approach. And then finally, you do the deployment in such a way that it is quite scalable. Deploying applications in cloud. Now, whenever I talk about deploying application in cloud, that basically means I'm trying to create either an API of it and try to consume it in some other applications. Okay. Now, this is super, super important. Okay. Kubernetes, Dockers and all. Uh, <clears throat> for the people who are at least more than 10 plus years of experience, they also really need to be good at big data. Okay. Now you may be saying, Krish, what is this? You just keep on adding skills. You know how we will be probably able to complete in three to four months. As I said, guys, this is a continuous process. Okay. I never directly went to Kubernetes and Docker in the first day. Every day I had to spend time. When I came to this intermediate level, then the next level, what I have to do, I went and learned Kubernetes Dockers. I have learned about AI ops. I have learned about the retraining approach. I've learned about deploying applications in cloud efficiently with the help of AI ops, right? AI ops basically just a click of button. The entire pipeline is basically created. You try to deploy a code in different, different environments and you basically check it out. That's it, right? So this is what the skills of advanced basically means with respect to data science. Now I'm also trying to focus on big data. Because why I'm not specifically talking about skill sets in big data, because in AWS, you pro you get a lot of services, right? You get a lot of services, right? Uh, to do most of the functionalities like Kubernetes Docker, you can definitely use, you can use a uh, Kinesis stream to get the uh, live stream data, you know, let it be from an IoT devices and all. Uh, if I talk about big data here, you have something like X3 bucket, you get to save some huge amount of information if you want to deploy an application you basically create an ec2 application if you want to make this ec2 application scalable you can use dockers over there and probably deploy an application so all these things are actually there now my one suggestion will be that if you are really 10 plus years of experience focus on one cloud my 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 personal super favorite is aws okay uh, yes, I've also worked in Azure. I have worked in GCP, but yes, I have uh, amazing, tremendous experience in AWS and I love it for what it is exactly, right? Because it has a lot of services in short. Now, right now, if you are, and trust me, if I talk about Python, okay, I have a playlist for this. Okay, if you go and search Krishnaik playlist, you'll be able to get. If you want to learn about statistics, I have a playlist about it, right? In my YouTube channel, this is completely for free. If you want to learn about machine learning, deep learning, life cycle of a data science project, I have the complete playlist. You don't have to go anywhere, right? Then if you want to learn about AWS, I have a playlist. If you want to learn about Kubernetes, Dockers, uh, I have a playlist. I have also shown you how to do the deployment. So I have created everything. I also have a playlist on AI ops. So this is also there. Okay. So if you're smart enough, if you are able to give around six months time, trust me, you will be able to get it. And if you are able to devote three hours daily, trust me, within six months, you will be able to clear any job. Okay. And this is what has come from our students who have devoted their time tremendously. That is the success rate that we have actually got with respect to an entire kind of implementation. So let me tell you one thing very much clear, guys. Yes, you may be thinking the skill sets are getting added more and more. But as I said, this learning is a continuous process. Tomorrow, something new may come. You have to really be good at it. You have to learn it and you have to be good at implementing those things. Right. And that is a common task that we may probably get. Right. So I hope you like this particular video. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. 
press the bell notification icon and i'll see you in the next video have a great day thank you one all bye bye